Hi everybody, the channel Knowledge Academy welcomes you. In this video, we are going to discuss what is meant by differential pulse code modulation. In our previous video, we discussed pulse code modulation. So, differential pulse code modulation is a uh, modified form of uh, pulse code modulation. So, why do we go for this kind of modification? And uh, how do we do this differential pulse code modulation? What are the advantages of differential pulse code modulation? These are the things that we are going to discuss in this video. Before entering into the video, kindly subscribe my channel Knowledge Academy. Now, let us enter into the video. Right. So, here what happens in pulse code modulation? The first step is sampling. Okay, sampling the analog signal. So, through sampling, what happens? We are converting an analog signal into discrete signal. So, discrete signal is full of samples and the samples are very closely spaced because we have to uh, sample them at a rate greater than the twice the highest frequency component, greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency component. That means we have to sample at Nyquist state. Okay. So, when we sample the signal at Nyquist state and if we analyze the samples, the closely, sam sample, uh, closely spaced samples, one sample uh, differ from the previous sample at a very small amount. Okay, the difference between one sample and the previous sample is very small. Okay, so like this. Okay, so if a signal is, if an analog signal is like this, and if we sample this analog signal, we'll be getting so this kind of signal. Okay, so a linear variation. The difference between this sample and this sample is small and the difference between this sample and this sample is small okay if you take any immediate two samples the difference between them is small whereas the difference between the in amplitude levels the difference in amplitude levels between this sample and the last sample it is very high okay but if we compare any two immediate samples the difference is small okay so here the idea is we are able to we can predict one sample from the previous sample so this is the idea here okay so we can predict one sample from the previous sample and we have to calculate the predicted error okay and then we have to quantize that predicted error okay so this kind of thing is done in differential pulse code modulation so what is the advantage of this okay what happens um, uh, since one sample the difference between one sample and the previous sample is small uh, and since we are predicting in pulse code modulation what happens a lot of redundant bits are generated whereas in differential pulse code modulation due to this prediction due to this prediction prediction is the important thing here okay so, and also we are not quantizing the actual signal we are quantizing the error between the predicted signal predicted sample and the actual sample okay so here what happens uh, since we are doing like this the redundant bits the generation of redundant bits is avoided and also the bandwidth can be efficiently utilized okay so this is the advantage of differential pulse code modulation compared to pulse code modulation modulation okay so let us see how we how can we do that okay so this is the thing this x of nts is the actual um, discrete signal okay so discrete signal x of t is the analog signal and when we sample we represent it as x of nts right and x of nts is passed through a summing block okay summer block this summer it adds x of nts but it subtracts e of nts e of nts it is nothing but uh, it subtracts the predicted value okay x cap of nts so it subtracts x cap of nts okay so uh, x of nts minus x cap of nts x cap of nts is nothing but the predicted output okay that gives the error signal predicted error e of nts that is passed through the quantizer okay so quantizer gives the output of v of nts okay and that v of nts is encoded and passed through the channel and uh, v of nts is also passed through a feedback loop okay and in the feedback loop there is again a summing block it adds the quantized output with the predicted value of previous sample and that will give u of nts using this u of nts u of nts becomes the input to the predictor and that predictor gives the predicted 
value of the current sample okay so this is the thing these are the things that is happening here okay so what happens the main thing is the main difference between pulse code modulation and uh, differential pulse code modulation is in differential pulse code modulation the instead of quantizing the actual discrete signal we are quantizing the error signal okay so uh, predicted error okay and a predictor block is employed so these are the main difference between pulse code modulation and differential pulse code modulation now let us analyze these things by the equation okay so x of nts x of nts is the discrete sample and it is uh, uh, the predicted value is subtracted from x of nts x cap of nts is subtracted from x of nts so it is done here in the block diagram and we as an output we are getting e of nts the error signal okay and now we are quantizing the error signal e of nts so when we quantize the error signal e of nts we will be getting v of nts so when we quantize so during quantization what happens we are approximating the sample value okay so we are not giving the absolute value to the sample value instead of that we are approximating the sample value because in quantization we are um, making the signal to be discrete in nature with respect to amplitude also so what happens an error occur okay quantization error normally occurs so e of nts plus q of nts whereas q of nts is nothing but it is the quantization error quantized error okay then we are going to encode these things we are going to encode these things and we are going to transmit this in through the channel okay and this thing e of nts plus q of nts also enters into the feedback path and feedback path that is responsible for the generation of predicted sample okay so u of nts becomes the input to the predicted how so how do we generate it using this block we generated okay it is in the addition of the predicted value of the previous sample with the quantized value of current uh, current uh, previous sample v of nts okay so that will give the input to the predictor and uh, using that we can uh, using that we can uh, generate the predicted value of the current sample okay so this is the thing so x of x cap of nts we can uh, generate x we can generate x cap of nts from this equation so from this equation x cap of nts is equal to x of nts minus e of nts okay so that is what we have substituted here x of nts minus e of nts and v of nts from this equation v of nts is e of nts plus q of nts so we are bringing it down e of nts plus q of nts okay so here minus e of nts and plus e of nts they are they cancel each other and uh, finally we have x x of nts plus q of nts so it is very interesting to note the final equation so the finally finally we have got x of nts plus q of nts so here this x of nts plus q of nts serves as the input to the predictor when we analyze this equation here this equation does not depend on um e of nts that is error predicted error or uh, it does not depend on um um uh, the predicted value x cap of nts it purely depends on the quantization of input signal okay so what happens when uh, when an input sample is quantized we'll be getting uh, the actual input signal plus quantization error so that is what occurring here okay so x of nts so although we have performed all these operations here okay the final input to predictor is simply the quantized value of the input sample okay so x of nts is the input discrete sample here and when we quantize it we will be getting x of nts plus q of nts that is what we have arrived and that is that serves as the input to the predictor so this also works similar to pulse code modulation okay so here the, the prediction or uh, the predicted error doesn't have uh, any role to play here it has the, the important role that it is playing is it is reducing the redundance um, uh, redundant bits but it is not affecting the performance of uh, um, a differential pulse code modulation when we compare it to the pulse code modulation in performance wise there is no difference so differential pulse code modulation obeys uh, performs as pulse code modulation but in a in a more efficient way and it utilizes the bandwidth in an efficient manner and also the redundant bit information redundant bit is generation of redundant bit is greatly avoided here so this is the reason why we go for differential pulse code modulation okay so here this is the differential pulse code modulation receiver and here b of nts when we 
when we pass the quantized uh, quantized value to the encoder we are getting a sample uh, a sequence of b of nts which is uh, when we encode them it is converted into the form of zeros and ones and the zeros and ones we are transmitting uh, transmitting it through the channel and b of nts in the receiver set it has to be decoded and uh, uh, when we decode it we will be getting v of nts that v of nts is should be added with x cap of nts the predicted value again we are having a predictor in the feedback path okay sorry okay so we are having a predictor employing a predictor here and that uh, predictor is in the feedback uh, loop and uh, when we add v of nts with the x cap of nts we are getting u of nts that becomes the output Okay, so this is regarding differential pulse code modulation receiver. So I hope you understand the purpose of going for a differential pulse code modulation and what are the advantages of differential pulse code modulation over uh, pulse code modulation. And it is actually, I forgot to mention that it is one of the waveform coding techniques, wave coding techniques, right? So um, if you like my video, kindly subscribe my channel and don't forget to comment, like and share and uh, i have posted already this video in my mother tongue tamil and uh, if you meet you again in the next video until then bye